because that's what the law dictates, not because that's what it had 198 criminal homicides here in Manhattan. I want to start by saying that my thoughts uh, and my heart are with the victims in Arizona uh, and obviously the victim's family here in New York. Uh, that is where all of our focus should be uh, and our priority. Uh, yesterday we learned from a press conference uh, that the Maricopa County attorney was refusing to extradite a suspect in a Manhattan murder investigation. Her reasoning, uh, not because that's what the law dictates, not because that's what advances justice, not because of a concern for victims, not at the request of the NYPD, but rather plain and simple, old-fashioned grandstanding and politics. I've been a prosecutor for 20 years. That should have no place in our profession. Uh, it is deeply disturbing to me that a member of my profession, a member of law enforcement, would choose to play political games in a murder case. Uh, so what I want to do uh, is take a few moments to correct the record on a few things, to talk about the facts, uh, the data, and the statistics, some of which are behind me. Let me start with first, during my tenure, the last two years, shootings are down 24 percent uh, in Manhattan. I'm sorry, shootings are down 38 percent in Manhattan. Homicides are down 24 percent. Manhattan, my county, which I'm honored to lead, our murder rate is less than half that of Phoenix, Arizona's. In 2023, they had 198 criminal homicides. Here in Manhattan, we had 73. Uh, as I'm sure you've heard our mayor say before, we are the safest big city in America. Uh, and that is true. Overall crime is down in New York City. It is down even further in Manhattan. Indeed, Manhattan is driving that decline. That is the data. Those are the facts. Uh, and these facts and statistics don't come out of thin air. They're not a coincidence. They are a byproduct of the hard work of the career public servants and prosecutors in the Manhattan DA's office and the hardworking men and women of the New York Police Department, which is second to none in law enforcement in our country. Um, again, working together, for example, we prosecuted 20 percent more gun cases. This is the data. These are the facts. County D.A. Mitchell has, I don't know how else to say it, just got it wrong at every single turn. She professes concern that a murder suspect uh, in Manhattan uh, would be released. I do not know what they do in Arizona, but I know that here in this county, New York County, we routinely seek and get remand, which means the person's in custody, in our murder cases. Those are the facts. I've heard she also was on Fox and Friends this morning saying that four Manhattan suspects were picked up by ICE in her county. This has demonstrably been proven to be false now for weeks. So to repeat a baseless falsehood on national TV is beyond the pale. The Department of Homeland Security, ICE, has said these were not those four suspects. The NYPD has said that. My office has said it publicly. Different names, different dates of birth, different fingerprints, different people. My office has indicted seven people in the despicable and heinous attack on two of New York's finest. 
Those seven people have appeared in New York court and are being held as we speak in pretrial detention. Those are the facts. Let me talk about extradition. This is a process that professional prosecutors do literally every day of the year. Red state, blue state, purple state, it does not matter. What matters are the facts and the administration of justice. So it pains me to be talking about this publicly. This is something that professional prosecutors like those in my office are handled by a phone call. And their question is like, what do your victims need? Is there an age issue? Uh, do we need to move faster here or there? What are the statute of limitations in your case? Do you have any evidence that might s spoil? Those are the questions that professional prosecutors ask. They do not go on TV and have a press conference and grandstand about the nuts and bolts process of extradition. That ignores the needs of the case. It cheapens justice, and it does not center the victims. It is inappropriate. I've been doing this now for 20 years. I have never seen anything like it, let alone in a murder investigation. So let me be clear what we do in Manhattan. In the words of, of, of my most famous predecessor, this is what we wake up and do every day. We follow the facts without fear or favor. The job is simple. I tell this to our new ADAs who start. You do the right thing. You do the right thing for the right reason, and you do the right thing in the right way. That's the job. That's the role. That's what I've done for 20 years. That's what I will continue to do. My sincere and abiding hope is that my counterpart in Arizona will start to do the same. I'll take questions. Just, okay, at, at this stage of the game, is there anything that you can do? Well, I hope, as I said in my last remarks, that uh, reason and professionalism uh, will take hold. Uh, the process, the next step in the process, uh, typically, and we anticipate here, will be a hearing in Arizona where the defendant uh, will have the opportunity to consent or not to extradition. If he consents, it's a moot issue. Uh, but what I'm hoping is that we will have regular professional conversations about the nuts and bolts administration of law. That's what we need to do. It pains me to be here talking about this. This is a phone call. What if he doesn't consent? Then, then if he does not consent, um, I anticipate, just like in our other extradition proceedings, then we'll have an extradition package. Um, interestingly enough here, this is an issue that goes from governor to governor uh, after it's prepared. So in some ways, that underscores the political grandstanding. This is not uh, uh, the Maricopa County attorney's decision, uh, and I'm hoping that facts, law, justice, and reason will prevail. Yeah. Doesn't the suspect have to fight the charges there first before coming here? No, then that's the matter when I talk about what professional prosecutors do. That's the phone call I'm talking about. That's the conversation. Now, we have a homicide case. So there's really nothing more important than a murder case. Uh, so I would think that should take priority. But the conversation that is supposed to take place, because there are victims in Arizona too, and that's a serious case. What's supposed to happen is, do you need to go first for some reason? Do you have a victim who uh, has a health issue? Uh, what are the statute of limitations uh, on assaults in Arizona? Uh, what is the evidence? And then I talk about what we need here. That's what's supposed to happen. Not at a podium, but behind a desk with books of law with professional prosecutors talking. That's what I'm hoping my counterpart will general will get back to. What's next for you? Do you plan on, do you have you, or do you plan on going, sending anyone there from your office to fight the, this expedition? Well, what's next, as I said, is the, is, the, is the hearing, and we'll take it from there. We'll see. I'm not, I won't, I won't sort of deal in hypos. Um, you know, that's what's next. I am. It sounds like you believe that your case should go be prosecuted first before the Arizona case because this is a murder and their cases are not. Is that correct? Well, look, it's a little more nuanced than that. We've talked a lot, so you know me. Right? It, it, it's driven by the facts. It's driven by the circumstances. What I know is that both cases are important. Uh, and as a general matter, a murder investigation is nothing more important than that. But the conversations supposed to happen is the ones I've talked about. They may have an, a statute of limitations issue in Arizona. right? They may have an issue about a piece of evidence um, you know, that, that you may be worried about someone's memory may fade. But that's the conversation. That's the granular work that professional DA's offices and my career public service do every single day. And again, without regard to blue state, red state, purple state, green state, this is about justice. This is about those victims. So we want to have that conversation. And have they, has the Maricopa County uh, prosecutor, has she reached out to you? Have you guys had any conversations? She had a press conference. 
Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Bright, don't you think though that she was making more reference to the appearance that your office lets people out without bail, uh, that there are, you know, we paid to be officers, we saw so many officers, that people, those defendants were let out without bail and had to be, you know, found or located and that your office is not tough on particular defendants. So I'm not going to engage in conjecture which is in our head, but th this is the data, Juliana. This is the data, right? 24% decline in homicides in two years. 38% uh, decline in shootings. Uh, this is the data. Manhattan is is safer, uh, and we, we gave you the data on the homicides in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, so th these are the facts. So I don't know what's in her head, but what's in her head is not the data and what's not the facts. And you ask about Times Square again. Look, let's talk about the facts. She talks about four people found in Phoenix, different date of birth, different fingerprints, different names. Weeks later, she says that's the same person. It's I was going to ask you a question, but I won't ask it. I mean, you know what that is. That's not reasonable. That's not, that's not the work of career prosecutors. That's not following the facts. That's a baseless, shameless mistruth, right? So what we did here in Manhattan was we did a thorough, rigorous investigation, kind of like going for 20 years. We identified the right people, charged them with the right crimes, indicted them, brought them into a Manhattan court, and they're all in custody. So I don't know what's in her mind, but those are the facts. When you hit the nail on the head, what's important, both these cases are important, um, but what's important is that we center the victims, and I'm not going to talk about kind of any confidential conversations, but we center them and we not cheapen the most important type of case historically, right? A murder investigation, right? We should be talking about the victims, the victim's family, when a trial date is. That's what we should be talking about. We should not be talking about political grandstanding. Um, so it pains me to be here with you. Sadly, we are here. I have to correct the record. When someone goes on TV and says that four people were arrested, it had absolutely nothing to do. When we got the seven people right here in custody, she wants to come see, and that's where they are. And it ignores these facts. Like, we have career public servants who are working hard as we speak to make these numbers a reality. Right? These, are so, these don't manifest themselves out of thin air. This is every single day we sit with our federal, local, and state partners. We focus on the drivers of crime, and we, we secure accountability. So that's what's going on here. I don't know what's going on in Arizona but beyond the data, but I know what's going on here, and I'm not going to stand by and have someone cheapen our process, lie to the public, uh, and, and really denigrate the great work that the career public servants are doing in my office. I'm not going to stand by for it. Our last question will go to Nikki. Mitchell, in her press conference, she called you out by name. Did that raise the temperature at all? What did you think when you heard that? My, my name doesn't matter. What matters are, are the victims, that justice be done, right? So if she, she hadn't said my name. She just said Manhattan. If she said New York City, if she, if, if she said, uh, you know, something by reference to me, that, that's not what matters. And I think that's the problem here, right? We're having a conversation about two prosecutors. The, the conversation should be about victims, Victims, family. That's what we do here in Manhattan. Since I've been district attorney, our use of our, of our survivor services is up 200%. Every single ADA applicant who I interview with, I tell them about that. I said that 200% is very meaningful to me. It means that advocates and social workers and counselors are being brought in to meet with our witnesses so we can address trauma. That's what we should be talking about. So my name doesn't matter. The people of Manhattan our safety, our security, accountability, victims, witnesses, the administration of justice, that's what matters. That's why we're here. Thank you. Thank you Investigation. Her reasoning, uh, not because I'm a prosecutor for 20 years, that should have no place in our profession. At, of Phoenix, Arizona's. 
in 2023, they have, that's what the law dictates. Not because that's what it means. So I'm honored to lead. Our murder rate is less than half that. The facts, uh, the data, and the statistics, some of which, are, uh, and obviously the victim's family here in New York, are behind me. Let me start with first, during my tenure, the last two years, uh, that is where all of our focus should be uh, and our priority. Uh, yes, this is justice, not because of a concern for victims, not at the request, take a few moments to correct the record on a few things, to talk about. I want to start by saying that my Sorry, shooters are down 38% in Manhattan. Homicides are down. Yesterday we learned from a press conference uh, that the Maricopa County attorney had 198 criminal homicides. Here in Manhattan, 